This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right, quest, uh, question two from section B of the specimen exam. As always, look at the requirements first. Calculate the value of GWW company using the following methods. One, market capitalization, equity market value. Two, net asset value, liquidation basis. Three, price earnings ratio method uh, using the business sector average price earnings. Uh, six marks, two marks each, split equal between each part. Bear that in mind, it's two marks. If you're spending half an hour, you're an idiot. Uh, it's not meant to take many minutes. Part B, discuss, so here's the written part, four marks, discuss briefly the advantages and disadvantages of using the dividend growth model. Unlike, uh, so the other way around from question one, this time the calculations uh, are more than the 50%, but even so, you know, we make mistakes. You've got to have a go at both A and B. You've got to make certain that you're getting at least half marks on every question. Anyway, let's look at part A first. Calculate the value of GWW using the volume methods. First of all, market capitalization. Let's look at what information we're given. Uh, a listed company, potential target for acquisition. Value's been in public debate. Um, we told the profits after tax have been um, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. Fine, it seems to be going up each year. Uh, we're given a statement of financial position for this year, 2012. Uh, it all looks quite normal. Shares, uh, equity finance, share capital reserves, some bonds. The shares have a nominal value of 50 cents a share and a market value of $4. Uh, the business sector of GWW has an average price earnings ratio of 17 times. The net realizable values of the current assets in the inventory are 86 and 4.2 respectively. In the event of liquidation, only 80% of receivables are expected to be collectible. Well, to be honest, the examiner couldn't have made this any easier for you. You really couldn't. First method of valuing, market capitalization. And he defined it, equity market value. But he's talking to market value. The first sentence below the um, statement the market value is $4 per share, so surely the total market value or the market capitalization How many shares are there? Be careful. On the statement, the value is $20 million, but since they were $0.50 cent shares, to get $20 million value, there must be 40 million shares. They have a market value of $4. And so the market capitalization, the total value of all the shares on the stock exchange is 160 million, two marks. What about number two? Net asset value means what it says, the value of the net assets on a liquidation basis. Look at the second uh, block beneath uh, the statement. The se expected net realizable values of the non-current assets in inventory are, boom, boom. In the event of liquidation, only 80% of the receivables are expected to be collectible. Well, let's just list those values of the net assets. The non-current assets, on the statement of 91, but the realizable value is 86. The inventory on the um, statement is 3.8, but the realizable value, which is what we're told to use, um, is 4.2. 
the receivables on the statement of 4.5, but it says the quantity liquidation basis that only 80% will be collectible. So 80% of 4.5 is 3.2. 3, I better check, I keep going wrong here. 80% of 4.5 is 3.6. So the value of the assets is 90.2, 93.8. Net assets, we need to subtract the value of the liabilities. Well, we've non-current liabilities of 25. There's current liabilities of 7.1. And there's no mention anywhere of the actual liability ending up any different. So what is the net value? 93.8 minus 25 minus 7.1. 61.7. Okay, part three. Our price earnings ratio, using the business sector average price earnings ratio. Um, you must have learned what the P-E ratio is. It's the market value per share divided by the earnings per share. And so to get market value on the P-E ratio method, the market value per share multiply both sides by the earnings per share. It will be the P-E ratio oh dear, times the earnings per share. Uh, the only one sort of, what you might call, amendment here, before I put the numbers in, it seems clearly from the earlier bits, instead of wanting the value per share, we want um, the total market value. Well, the total market value, the P ratio times the total earnings. And now we've got it, uh, that here, what is the average P-E ratio? The average price earnings ratio is 17. Now the examiner actually got his wording in a bit of a mess here. Um, because it says the business sector has an average P-E ratio, it means in our type of business, some might be slightly more, slightly less, but on average 17. Our P ratio is always measured based on current earnings, current market value. So the current earnings, the profit after tax, 2012, are 10.1, which gives a market value of 17 times 10.1, uh, 171.7. Now, that's strictly is the right answer. I think the examiner, I think he said in his answer that, in fact, because he'd given you the earnings over the last few years and the word average appeared in the question, uh, some people did the same as what I've done, but based on average earnings, strictly that's wrong, uh, but it was partly due to his wording. The P ratios, it's always current market value and Sort of current earnings. All right, there's the numbers. Uh, part B briefly, because again, like before, I am not going to write down a full answer. You've got the examiner's answer. He says, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using the dividend growth model to value the shares? Um, the dividend growth model, I, we're not doing any numbers here, you're not asked for them. But the market value P0 is D0 1 plus G over RE minus G. That's, that's the formula. And you have seen questions. There was at least one in the multiple choice section. Where you have the figures, you sit them in the formula, and there we are. Well, that's what he's talking about. But what are the advantages of it? Well, first, in theory, that's how shares are valued. In theory, if you've watched the lectures, you know that the market value of shares is the present value of future dividends discounted at investors' required return. And effectively, that's what that formula is doing. You don't prove it, 
but it's effectively giving the present value of future dividends. And in theory, that's what determines market values, even though in real life, other things might be effect affected. Also, I'm not sure how much of an advantage it is, but um, certainly in exam questions, we know those figures. It's not a question of um, having to use similar companies and so on. However, the big disadvantage with using that to value is although we know what the current dividend is, in real life, if you're applying it to this question, how are you going to estimate future growth rate? That is the huge problem. Um, you know, to say more will be silly here because you should have done questions using it so you know what I mean. But the huge problem is, if we were using it for this question, for instance, uh, uh, they could have told us the current dividend, but how in real life will you estimate the future expected growth rate? Uh, because it's the growth rate the shareholders expect. And also it is assuming they're expecting a constant rate of growth. Anyway, that's more than enough for the four marks, apart obviously from the time it takes to actually write it down.